just as we did with z-scores, we're going to have to reverse the process that we just used. So um, we've done the first two with z-scores, and then we just did part three, where we wanted to find the area given an x-value. So now we're going to reverse it. We're going to find x-values from given areas. Notice that these times the results can have units. That's the first time that's ever happened. Z-scores don't have units, so there's no z and probabilities don't have units. So one and three are not going to give you any units because they're probabilities that you're finding. They're areas, right? And then number two, z-scores, z-scores don't have units, so they can't. But this could. It could have feet or inches or whatever. So it's just something to keep in mind, especially when we have a context problem which we don't have on this page anyway. All right, so assume that x is normally distributed, find the following. Okay, so the score that cuts off the top 8%. Okay, so think about what that means. So we have a center line here at 2200. We want to know what value, this is what we're looking for, this cuts off the top 8%. So the top is over here on the high side, and it's worth 8%, which is point. Okay, so according to our technology table, when we want to find an x value from an area, which we have, that 0 0.08, we have a percent, 8 percent, we put in the mean and the sigma, and we're going to do this right here, right? We're going to put in the area and find the x value. All right, so let's go to StatCrunch. Oh, again, I was uploading a video. <laughs> So here we go. All right, in stat crunch, let's see here. So I'm in the stat normal calculator, just as usual. So I want to click standard. I don't want a between one. This isn't doesn't have two values. I'm going to put in my values 2200 and 200. So it always tells you to put the mean and standard deviation in first. All right, then I don't know what the score is. It's saying, hey, what's your x value? I don't know. But I do know that it's a greater than area, so that's right. And then I want this to be 0 0.08, enter. And there we have it. And the picture matches, right? It should, you always want to verify that the picture that StatCrunch is drawing for you makes sense. So greater than or equal to 2481 point, did I ask, ask for two decimal places, so 0 0.01 equals 0 0.08. So the 0 0.08 is not the answer. The answer is 2481. 2481 is that value. That's the answer. If you like, you can write, you know, x equals 2481.01. There you have it. All right, let's do it again. So this time, the mean is 75. So before I do anything, I'm just going to change this. 75 and 8. Lovely. And it's telling me it wants the 83rd percentile. Ah, okay, now be careful. Percentile is not the same thing as percentile rank. Percentile rank is what we did for 3, right? That's when you know an x value and you're looking for the percentile that's to the left of it. This one, right, I want to find the x value that gives me the 83rd percentile. I'm given the percentile. Now, percentage, percentile is always the percentage below you. So if you were at the middle, that would be 50% below you. So I have to be over here on the right somewhere because this area has to be worth 83%. It has to be 0.83, right, 83%, which is 0.83, has to be. Okay, so I'm just looking for that value. So let me tell it, okay, this is a less than, so I'm going to switch to an, a different direction. So I want to be shading to the left. I don't know the value here, so that can go away, but I do know that the area is 0.83, right? So if I put the area in over here on the right, it's going to tell me the answer when I click compute. We always put areas to the right. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but it's always the area that goes in over there on the right side of the equal sign. Okay, so this is the probability that x is less than or equal to 82.63 equals 0 0.83. And that 82.63, that's the answer. Oh, it's not 0 in the center. What am I thinking? It's 75 in the center. Sorry. This is what we're looking for, right? And what we found. That value is 82.63. All right.
next one. Well, this is where we're really happy we have StatCrunch, because StatCrunch is going to make this go nicely. So we're going to click between, because this is a between problem. I notice that my mean is 80, my standard deviation is 12. So I'm just going to put those in right now. All right, now I know the area, right? We always put the area to the right of the equal sign. That's where area goes. If you look at this table, it always shows you area, 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 area. The area is always to the right. It's just sometimes the area is what you're looking for, or sometimes it's something that's known. In this case, we know it. We know the area is 0.4175. Now, if I just press enter right now, that's not going to work. Matter of fact, I'll do it, as you can see. That's not working. That's not the same picture, right? Because that's centering the 0.4175 around the mean. It's putting half of it on one side, half of it on the other. That's not what we want. So I want the mean and the standard deviation to be these values. I want that area to be 0.4175, but I want this value over here on the right to be fixed at 80. Right? So let me tell it 0.4175. I, I have to retype both of these in. Sometimes that happens. Don't freak out. So I think you have to put the area in, retype it, retype that area, and then put this value in as 80, and then click Compute. Boop. There it is. 63.34, because I can see the next number is an 8. So the probability that x is, oh, sorry, that 63.34 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 80, is 0.4175. And the answer I was looking for is this value right here. That's that x value. This is where StatCrunch comes in nice and handy. That's a very nice feature of StatCrunch, that you can kind of finagle it, <laughs> right? You put in your area, then you put in one of the values that's locked in, and then it'll find the other value. Now, that's opposed to D. D doesn't have an area locked in. It doesn't ha or have a value locked in. We know that the center line is 180. And what it wants is the middle 75%, the symmetric middle at that. And again, this is reiterating something we're going to use in Chapter 9. It's kind of the same trick. So what you're saying is, hey, this area in the center, this middle, is 0.75. Right? It's 0 0.75. So I want to do what I did before. I want to put in 180. Always change your mean and your standard deviation appropriately. Standard deviation is actually 12 for both of these. And I'm going to go here and put in 0.75. And I'm going to click Compute. And see, that's what I did want. I wanted it to center it up. I didn't want it on the previous problem because the previous problem locked in this right side at 80. But this one doesn't. So I'm looking for this x value and this x value. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. And I'm finding both of them because the probability that 1.661, oh, that's 195, it looks like. So if I'm going to two decimal places, that'll become a 2, 0. Two decimal places will round that 19 up to a 20. So, oh, it's 166. I don't know why I put a decimal there. Sorry. 166.20 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1893.80. That 4 keeps it low, so 193.80 equals 0 0.75. And the answers I was looking for are this number right here, which is the one on the left, and this number right here, which is the one on the right. So the one on the left is, oh, I did it again, 166.2. And the x on the right is 193.8. All right, that's all there is for StatCrunch. I'm going to again show this how to how to do this all in the TID4. So if you're not using a TID4, you can just skip ahead to the next video. All right, TID4 folks. Let's see here. This is these are the ones that are tricky. Right? This is inverse norm, so this is going to be a little bit fun. Okay, so let's start with second distribution, inverse norm. If you have a new calculator, this isn't so bad. So you can say 0 0.08, and then we tell it uh, 2200, and then we tell it 200, and we tell it the areas on the right tail, which it is, and then we paste, enter. Lovely. 
old calculator, not so much fun. <laughs> so the old calculator, so you hit in second distribution, inverse norm was number three, and you have to tell it that area to the left because it only takes left tail area. So the area to the left is 0.92. I'm getting that from one take away 0 0.8, 0 0.08. So if you want to do it that way, you can. 2200, 200. And there you have it. Now the one on the, um, this one is easy for both calculators because the left tail areas is the default on the old calculator. So I'm just going to tell it 0 0.83. I'll tell it 75 and 8. Paste, enter. On the new calculators, you do the same thing but you just tell it left. So you say 0 0.83, 75, 8, but choose left by pressing enter on left, and then paste. OK, so then um, letter C, well, that's fun. <laughs> OK, so um, hmm. the thing about this is that this over here is 0.5. And that means that this tail over here, well, we can find it. What's one take away 0 0.4175, take away 0 0.5. Or if you like, you could take 0 0.5 and take away 0 0.4175. Either way would work. That gets us, this is 0 0.0825. And that's what we'll use. So we would use second inverse norm because you can't use the center. So you're going to have to use 0 0.0825, 80, and 12. Tell it left and paste. There you have it. Um, if you wanted to, you could also do, just on the new calculators, this is an option, uh, 0. Oh, what was it? <laughs> 9175, and then tell it right. Because that's the, the red area that's shaded and the, the right-hand side put together. That would work. On the old calculator, it's just second inverse norm, and it's the same thing we did here, 0 0.0825, and then you tell it uh, 80 and 12, and there you have it. So they don't give you that option of left and right on the old calculators, so you have to kind of finagle it yourself, which is my word of the day, apparently. Okay, so then the last one, the symmetric middle. On the old calculator that's more difficult. On the new calculator that's not so bad. So you tell it this symmetric middle is 0 0.75, you tell it this is 180, 12, and you just tell it that it's the center by pressing enter on center. And then you paste it, and there you have it. <sighs> the old calculators this is much more of a pain because what you have to do is you have to find what the tails are. So give me a second, let me make this bigger. All right, if the middle is 0 0.75, then one takeaway 0 0.75 is the area that I have for both tails, which is 0 0.25. And then I split it in half, and that gives me each of these tails is 0 0.125. Okay, so then I would say, all right, well, let me put that in. So second inverse norm, <sighs> the one on the left will have 0 0.125 as its area, 0 0.125. And I would tell it 180 and 12. There's the one on the left, 166.19. The problem is the one on the right, because I can't do 0 0.125 for that one. And I can't do 0 0.75. I need all of this together. So I have to tell it inverse norm. And I want to tell it 0 0.125 plus 0 0.75 together. It's both this tail and that bit in the center. To the left, of that right value, right? That's the way these calculators worked. And there you have it. So way more of a pain, obviously, than the new calculators or stack crunch, right? Which make this a lot easier.